Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about a very cool type of combustion which uses gasoline and diesel fuel in the same engine and in labs has been shown to achieve thermal efficiencies of 60%. So it's called RCCI, Reactivity Controlled Compression Ignition, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I know this looks like a ton of information, but it's going to be a great general overview of how this engine works. Uh, and a lot of the research for this engine has come out of the University of Wisconsin, so shout out to the University University of Wisconsin for the work that they've done on this. Very cool stuff. So first we're going to get into the engine, then we will talk about how combustion works. We'll get into some of the finer details about, you know, different loads, uh, thermal efficiencies, air to fuel ratios, that kind of thing. And then get into finally the pros and cons of the engine toward the end. So how does the engine work? Well, the whole idea is that you have two different types of fuel, one with a low reactivity and one with a high reactivity. So in this case, we have a port injector, which will be injecting gasoline. You can choose to use other different fuels. They've tested out natural gas and ethanol as the low reactivity fuel. And then you have direct injection of a high reactivity fuel, in this case, diesel fuel. So diesel fuel has a short ignition delay, the time that it takes from when that fuel is injected to when it ignites, and it wants to ignite uh, in those conditions, versus the gasoline doesn't want to ignite in those conditions. It has a lower reactivity. And so that's the basic structure of the engine, uh, where you're going to have two different types of fuel, one with high reactivity, one with low reactivity. It doesn't have to be gasoline and diesel, uh, but that's what in this video we were talking about, um, and that's what a lot of their testing involved was using gasoline and diesel fuel. Okay, so how does combustion occur within this engine? So we're gonna go through the steps that take place. Of course, the first one being you've got that port injector. So during your intake stroke as that piston is moving down, pulling in an air fuel mixture of gasoline and air. Then it starts to compress and there are going to be two injections of diesel fuel. So the first one is injected before that air fuel mixture has gotten very hot. So it's not hot enough to ignite that fuel and it's going to start mixing that diesel fuel with the gasoline, kind of creating this uh, kind of layer, this area right here, which is a mix of gasoline and diesel fuel versus just gasoline, which will be around the outside. So that's gonna to start to mix in. And then as that piston gets closer to the top, then you're going to be injecting uh, a little bit more diesel fuel, which is used purely for ignition. Um, and you could inject a bit more actually for the air fuel ratio, uh, but you're doing that final injection to start combustion. So what happens with that second injection is you have what is called a cool flame. So it's a diesel cool flame, and it's just the diesel fuel that has been injected that's starting to ignite, not that you know mixture of gasoline and diesel fuel. And so there's a little low reactive, just on that very edge of that uh, fuel that's injected in a very small you know cool flame is what it's called because there's not a lot of heat uh, that comes out as a result of it but it's enough heat to start combustion in the rest of the chamber so once that cool flame has started that forces the diesel and gasoline mixture which is around it to then ignite and then once that diesel and gasoline mixture starts to ignite that of course causes the gasoline which is around the rest of the cylinder to ignite so that's kind of the three-step process you have that cool flame you have the mixture that ignites and then you have the gasoline that ignites and so if you look at a pressure curve um, so here on the bottom we've just got uh, degrees of the crankshaft rotation so zero would be top dead center negative 10 would be 10 degrees uh, before top dead center and so you can see first you've got that cool flame which causes a little pressure rise then you have that mixed area which starts to ignite and then you have finally another pressure bump once that gasoline ignites uh, so that's the process of combustion and depending on how you change uh, the ratio of diesel fuel to gasoline this curve will change pretty dramatically Okay, so now let's talk about some test results and some, you know, data surrounding real engines using this style of combustion. So in this case, we're going to be talking about a 2.44 liter single cylinder. This is a heavy duty engine. Um, so it's just a single cylinder, 2.44 liter uh, Caterpillar Scote engine with a compression ratio of 16.1 to 1, operating at 1300 RPM. They also did testing in a 1.9 liter GM four cylinder engine just to prove that it can be used in light duty and heavy duty applications. Uh, but the results we're discussing here are from the single cylinder 2.44 liter. And so we're going to be talking about the gasoline percentage, uh, the air fuel ratio, and the thermal efficiency. And basically the way this test works is they hold the engine constant at 1300 RPM and then they vary the load. So essentially how much throttle it's getting. So very low throttle to full throttle. 
and measuring uh, different points, the gasoline percentage, air fuel ratio, and thermal efficiency at these different points. Uh, and so, of course, you know, what, what you're doing essentially is you're taking that dyno and it's breaking the engine as the load increases to make sure that the RPM stays at 1300 RPM, uh, but the load can vary. And so starting off with the gasoline percentage, at lower load, you use less gasoline. And part of this is because gasoline resists ignition uh, at low loads. It's one of the reasons why HCCI engines, which are kind of like the holy grail, are so difficult is because uh, they, it's hard to have low load gasoline auto ignition um, versus, you know, in this engine, you're using two different fuels and you're using diesel fuel as your ignition source uh, so you can get away with using uh, gasoline at low loads and things like that. Uh, but essentially, as you increase in load, you increase uh, the percentage of gasoline. And that's not a perfect correlation. Um, there's kind of a sweet spot in there and then it dips back down and comes back up. Uh, but essentially at lower loads, you're using less gasoline, more diesel fuel. At higher loads, you're using as much as 90% gasoline with just 10% diesel fuel. And most of the time, uh, you're going to be injecting most of the diesel fuel in that first injection, so the one that mixes. Uh, but some points, you know, in this load range, you actually do inject more diesel fuel in that second injection. So it's, there's a lot going on control-wise uh, while this is happening, while you're sweeping that range um, of, of the engine within that set RPM. So the air fuel ratio, uh, as you might expect, um, is very high at low load and then it gets lower. So once you're getting to, you know, majority gasoline, of course, you've got to get that uh, air fuel ratio down much lower. But when you've got that mix of diesel fuel and gasoline, very cool, you can actually operate at this 45 to 1 air fuel ratio. So at low load, you can get, you know, super good fuel efficiency because you're using a really uh, high air to fuel ratio and, you know, you're not using uh, too much fuel, of course, because you're at low load, your efficiency is still high. So that's kind of what the coolest thing about this is, is that the thermal efficiency, worst case on this chart right here is 49%. Um, and of course, you know, this is a pretty efficient RPM. As you get into higher RPM, the efficiency will start to decrease. But what's very cool is that across the entire load range, your worst case scenario is 49% thermal efficiency. And, you know, it kind of peaks in the center here at 56% thermal efficiency. Um, so for context, uh, Mazda's SPCCI engine, uh, which is super efficient, currently their Skyactiv X engine, uh, which isn't on sale yet, uh, is peaking somewhere around, you know, 43-ish percent. They haven't released actual numbers, but they've said it's slightly better than the best that's out there, which is in the Toyota Prius, <coughs> which is around 42%. Now, diesel engines will have better efficiency. They'll tend to be, you know, in the, the 48, close to 50% region, um, but this is exceeding diesel efficiency. So very cool uh, what's possible using the combination, the best of both worlds between gasoline and diesel. Okay, so that leads us to pros and cons. And one of the things we haven't even discussed in this video is the huge benefit that this engine has, which is emissions. And so it has very low uh, nitrogen oxide emissions and very low particulate matter, so soot. And you know, this is kind of a trouble, a burden on diesel engines, uh, but because this has very cool burning, um, it doesn't produce the nitrogen oxides. And because the diesel fuel has time to mix, and because you're not using a lot of that diesel fuel, most of your fuel is mixed, well mixed. And well mixed fuel uh, doesn't tend to produce particulate matter. It's where you have those rich pockets of fuel that produces particulate matter. So particulate matter and nitrogen oxide and OX uh, emissions are very, very low in this engine. And so that's a huge benefit of it, aside from the fact that it's extraordinarily efficient. So super efficient, 10 to 15% more efficient than you know uh, some of the best diesel engines out there. And this is mainly as a result of having lower com uh, combustion temperatures and because of that less heat transfer uh, within the cylinder. So actually when they achieved in the lab the 60% thermal efficiency, one of the things they did is they didn't have oil cooling for the piston because they found out that that oil cooling actually pulled out some of the work that was being done, uh, you know, from combustion. So, you know, a, a, you know, a method that they used in order to slightly improve the efficiency there, but they were able to achieve 60% thermal efficiency uh, in lab testing. So very cool to see. Uh, eliminate exhaust after treatment. So that's a, a really cool thing that they were able to do 
based on 20, 2010 EPA requirements, they were able to meet those requirements without any exhaust after treatment, which of course everything that's diesel is using exhaust after, after treatments to take care of it uh, if they're doing it correctly. Um, and so, you know, pretty interesting that there is a way that you could possibly get around that. And if you could, you could save a ton of money by not having all that expensive equipment in the exhaust uh, required for diesel engines today. So some of the disadvantages, uh, well, two fuels uh, obviously isn't ideal for a consumer. You don't want to have two separate tanks to fill up. Then you've got two separate fuel systems to worry about. Um, so that kind of is, you know, a disadvantage to think about. Also, you know, there are, there are, there is research occurring in which you're only using one fuel and then either treating it or kind of getting into some different methods at which you can use a single main fuel tank and either add additives or manipulate that fuel somehow so you can still have this kind of combustion method. So perhaps I'll do a video later on talking about something like that. Uh, and of course, this is a development engine. So there's plenty of kinks to work out. Uh, it's still being developed. It's not mass produced. Um, so it's not as simple and amazing as this, you know, short little whiteboard video makes it seem. Uh, there are definitely challenges with it. I also think, you know, if you're going to have a peak efficiency without oil cooling, that's probably not ideal unless you've got pistons that can somehow handle not having that oil cooling uh, where that 60% thermal efficiency was achieved. But regardless, you know, they, they are able to achieve 56%, um, you know, pretty easily. So it's a truly incredible, very cool, uh, efficient uh, method of combustion. If you guys found this interesting, I will certainly include some related videos of other different styles of combustion uh, and their benefits. Uh, and also I will include some research, uh, which kind of shows, you know, behind, you can go into the research that this video is based off of, if you care to check that out. The uh, language will not be quite as nice as this video. You're gonna get all kinds of crazy acronyms and that kind of thing. Uh, but if you'd like to check it out, I'll certainly include links to it. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you would like to leave any questions or comments, feel free to do so below.